go ahead and begin to pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit, everyone. Go ahead and pray in the spirit. Let that which you have received rest in your spirit, man. This is coin on here. Someone is praying. Blessed be the God and our Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We worship Him in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' mighty name we worship. In Jesus' mighty name we worship. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. He's not the only spirit, but he is that spirit. That spirit that brings translations in the spirit, that lifts people. You see, without the presence factor, there is no church. It is beyond the paraphernalia. It is beyond the activities. What brings power to the things that we do is the presence factor. You can fake power, but you cannot fake presence. For your name is holy, holy Lord. For your name is holy, holy Lord. Anibala salenge verene Spirit of the living God, we pray that you will breathe upon us tonight. We are gathered to be fanned to flames yet again. We are gathered to receive insight and illumination. And we pray that you will help us. The Bible says you are our helper, helping our infirmities, our limitations. We submit ourselves to your wisdom. And we pray that you will do mighty things in our midst. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen and amen. God bless you. Please be seated if you can. And I want you to be very, very sensitive. This is the house of God. This is not a viewing center. This is not a cinema hall. This is not a place for acting some movie. God has decided to invest his presence in this house. He has decided to tabernacle among us. And we're honored to host his presence. The meaning of that is that you will never return the way you came. In the name of Jesus Christ. That his light and his grace will be so rested upon you that when you step out of this place, it will be clear tonight that you met the King of Kings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we'll go straight to the business of tonight. But um, like I promised us last week, let me just make the announcement for the Sound of Revival UK. And then once we're done, we'll just pray on the bills. And then we'll get to discuss that which God has in store for us tonight. 
in the name of Jesus. There's someone who came here with a very strong pain by the side, looked like a strong abdominal pain. The power of God is touching that person right now. Right now. That pain is a demonic thing. It's not a medical condition. It's a satanic oppression. In the name of Jesus, it leaves this moment by the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit. There's someone you've been having difficulty moving your neck. You are able to move your neck, but it looks like there's something there is there's there's something that creates excruciating pain you will feel like fire as i'm speaking right now and that demonic thing will leave you once and for all in the name of jesus the son of the living god hmm. we believe in jesus we believe in his power when we read this bible it is for us beyond a history book. It is beyond a story book. This is a capture of not what God has done, but what he is able to do when men believe him. Hallelujah. Perhaps this is a message already for someone. Don't play games with God. Mean business with God. And he will cause your life to be a sign and a wonder. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm hearing restoration. This is what I'm hearing. I'm hearing restoration. Restoration. You see, these words are not just empty words. There is a power behind them. And it is that power that brings them to pass. Restoration. I'm saying it again. By the Spirit of the living God. That everything that has left your life that is inconsistent with God's will in the name that is above all names I prophesy upon your life this day and this moment may my God restore this day and this moment may my God restore and every power that tries to fight this prophecy may the hand of God clear it out of the way You will marvel and wonder at what happens to you at the instance of this word. I'm not just speaking to you. I'm placing something by this word on your head. I say it one last time. Restore. 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 Shabarakatosiata. Restore. In every area you have lost, in every area there has been depletion, let there be restoration by the Spirit of grace. Please be seated. In the name of Jesus, be seated. Just help those under the anointing. No power in existence. Listen to me. Most people have not taken time to know God. Lay your hands on your head and declare that no force of darkness will interrupt God's program in your life in this season. Go ahead and begin to pray it. No power in existence. We serve a living God. No power in existence. Not by ancestry. Not by enchantment. Not by demonic patterns. No power in existence sustains what it takes to abort the program of God in your life, my life, our lives. Pray! Turn it to power in one minute. Radila Shalaga Baraka Tabarat. No power. Skate Parika Paruska Belekata. No power manifesting as sickness. No power manifesting as failure. Manifesting as patterns. We come against it in the name of Jesus, the Christ of God.
In Jesus' mighty name we pray. He said, who seen that this man was born blind? Was it him or his father? And Jesus said, neither, but that the glory of the Lord will be revealed. Let me speak over someone. You will not suffer the sins of your parents. You, will, you are delivered from the consequences of the sins of those who went ahead of you. I say it again, you will not be a victim of the consequences from the sins of those who have gone ahead of you or those who were before you. Hallelujah. You believe what you're receiving? Please be seated. When you come to the house of God, be full of faith. One moment of encounter in his presence can literally rewrite your destiny. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, it says, For without faith it is impossible to please him, the him being God, for he that cometh to God must believe, number one, that he exists, and then number two, that he is the rewarder or a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. May the Lord do us good tonight in the name of Jesus. All right, so let's have the um, bill for the Sound of Revival United Kingdom. We're going to pray. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. And so this is to our global family and then our family in the United Kingdom and indeed all over Europe by the grace of God. The sound of revival for this year will be in Leeds. We're using the first direct arena in Leeds. It will be on the 19th and the 20th of September. So it's still a long time. But then um, so that we're able to manage and improve on that which we did last year, we're opening up the doors so that people can be aware and then they can plan. So this will be long after we're done with U.S. and done with Canada. Do not forget again that U.S. is 18th and 19th. Canada is 24th and 25th. Sound of revival. Please stretch your hands and I want us to speak that in the name of Jesus Christ, we're taking this fire of the Spirit across the globe to the nations and the continent of the earth. Stretch your hands. We are declaring by the Spirit of the living God, there will be a reign of salvation, reawakenings, mighty, mighty manifestations of the Spirit. The angel that signifies revelations, we release them by the power of the Holy Spirit to take these glad tidings across Europe, across the nations, that multitudes will come to encounter the God of the Bible. Some of them your loved ones. Some of them those who have gone before you. Some of them distant relatives. In the mighty name of Jesus, and so to our Koinonia UK family, please go ahead and take the glad tidings all across Europe. This is what the Lord is doing. We're using First Direct Arena. It's a beautiful arena and we trust God to have awesome sessions in his presence in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Um, are we ready for registration for UK? Is the link there okay so fine so for all of you in UK and around Europe 
that's your link. Please go ahead and register. Do you know, we're, we're trusting God for grace. I'm told that um, they've almost exhausted the links even for U.S. And we're still wondering how we're going to walk around it because this is just February. Within 48 hours, it was almost... Um, we're praying that we don't have to still get two different auditoriums to use, uh, but we have to make do with whatever it is that God is granting grace. It just tells you that people are hungry. They are desperately looking for the living God. People are tired of games, tired of nonsense. They are looking for God, God whose power can be demonstrated here and now. Hallelujah. So for all who are in UK, please follow the link, scan the barcode, and um, use it for your registration. Please make that as fast as you can for you and for your loved ones. This will help us plan, and um, we'll do our best to manage as many people who will be coming all across Europe. And um, let's trust God that the venue we have will be able to contain the people if otherwise, God will grant us wisdom on what to do. But please take advantage of it now so the doors are open. You can begin to register. It's free, but you need to register so that it helps us to manage the people. And as always, let's display the account details so that would allow those who want to give. So for all of you, our Koinonia UK family, that is our account details you have there. Please take advantage of it for all your givings. All your givings, take advantage of it. Give, give generously. Give because you love Jesus and give as part of your kingdom responsibility. Our orientation in this house and in this ministry and God is bringing the body of Christ to that state of maturity is that this matter of money should not be about manipulation or telling lies. There is nothing to hide. The program of God always runs on the shoulders of yielded vessels is as simple as that are we together and that giving in the kingdom is motivated number one by our love for jesus and our desire to be part of his program that if because of my one pound one dollar one naira or one whatever currency someone comes to know jesus someone is saved someone is healed that is also credited unto me in heaven and part of the responsible Christianity we're building is for every believer to know that you have a role, even a financial role to play in God's program. Void of coercion, void of manipulation. Giving willingly, giving joyfully, motivated by love. That when we stand on that crusade ground and you see the multitudes coming to Jesus, the multitudes getting healed, you smile knowing that your seed played a role to make that happen. Are we together? And the Bible tells us that the ones who give will always be rewarded, even in this life. So UK Give, for all other expressions, we've made the account details available. Um, I understand that um, a few people have had issues. We're trying to work on one or two issues with um, account in US. So if for any reason, You've tried to give and there's been a limitation. Please just be patient, especially for those outside the U.S. who are giving. I think those within there may not have any problem. Uh, particularly for U.S., we've had to add a few more accounts so that we're able to meet up uh, not only the volume but to give people diversity of expression. So um, more on that will come in subsequent services. But just for you to know, that God is doing great and mighty things. And it is an honor for us to be part of what he's doing. That is First Direct Arena. That's what we'll be using for the conference in the United Kingdom. We thank God for his grace and we trust that God will be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I think we're ready for the business of the night. Hallelujah. Let me start by prophesying over your life. I think when I was praying, the Lord gave me a scripture, Deuteronomy chapter 8, 7 to 9. I have to obey God and speak it over your life. 
then I'll charge our hearts tonight. Just allow me read, and then I'll speak it over your life. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee, this is the scripture that came to me while I was praying, into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and depths that spring out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of oil, of olive and honey. Verse 9, a land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Thou shalt not lack anything in it. A land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. This is provision even in the times of scarcity. Even though I'm not teaching on finances tonight, but I have to obey the Lord in the name of Jesus. By the power of prophecy, I'm praying for you that beginning from this week, may you step into a strange level of financial testimonies. We call upon God who has graciously shown us mercy that in the name of Jesus Christ, everyone connected to this grace, I'm prophesying to you by the Spirit of the living God, not not in two weeks, not in three weeks, not next year, not in March. You have the faith to believe I speak over your life. In the name of Jesus, step into a realm of extraordinary abundance. Abundance by the wisdom of God. Abundance by the favor of God. Abundance by strategic relationships. Abundance by inheritance in the name of Jesus. So don't be surprised if someone who has not called you in a long time calls you and says, God, just put it in my heart that for the remaining part of this year, every month, not once, not twice, every month, that I should be blessing you and blessing your children. You have the faith to believe it. I speak it over your life. Hallelujah. I remember very humorously, I was speaking here, I think it was last year or so. Um, I used to have a dog. The dog is now dead. And I just mentioned the dog and someone called from US and said I'll be taking care of the dog every week and every month. I'll be sending money from UK. And I said, what is all this? <laughs> For a dog? What is it eating? Let your power, Holy Ghost power, rest on me, rest on me. Let your power, Holy Ghost power, rest on me, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. taught you that it is what is upon you that controls everything around you believe me when I tell you that it is what comes on your head that controls what is around you it says thou anointest my head with oil but I see the effect of what is on my head on my cup he doesn't anoint the cup thou anointest my head with oil and my cup runneth over in the name of Jesus, please be seated. God is doing something across the globe that is phenomenal. God is doing something in Africa that is phenomenal. As a man of God, I was sharing with a few people back in Lagos. I'm seeing the formation of a cloud that once happened before we came to the scene. There is a cloud that is gathering again. God is moving in a way, perhaps not exact, but a way similar to what he has done before. Maybe before some of us were born, but he's coming again. And we are seeing the formation of that prophetic cloud gathering from region to region, gathering from nation to nation, 
gathering from continent to continent. Perhaps could it be the formation for the last move of God before Jesus returns? I doubt that there will be many, many other moves. The signs are already showing that we are wrapping up. It is true. But we are seeing a heavy cloud that is forming. And this cloud is going to pour out rain. That rain is not going to be little. That rain will last. Hallelujah. It is true. This is not a cloud that is just forming. Just No, 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 no. This one is beyond the fist of a man's hand. It is a very mighty thick cloud. The Spirit of God himself is gathering that cloud. It's a mighty rain of revival. Is a mighty rain of outpouring, is a mighty rain of awakenings. It is the reenacting of Ezekiel 37 again. And I have seen this many times in my visions. In 2005, the Lord opened my eyes and I saw the continent of Asia. I saw fire just like a single candlestick and I saw many Chinese young people and it came upon one just one person and it began to spread began to spread began to spread you see I have seen the same formation in Africa because this is the continent that will present Christ to the world before Jesus returns it is in prophecy it is true and if you are here gathered tonight, let me tell you, it is because there is something within your spirit. Tonight, deep is about to call unto deep. Deep is about to call unto deep. Deep is about to call unto deep. Doesn't matter whether you're a male or female. Doesn't matter whether you are young or old. It is a prophetic formation over something mighty that God is doing. And we're glad that we'll be witnessing this in our lifetime. The fathers, in the next 10 to 20 years, the truth is that for the fathers, the cloud is already shifting. They are already seeing the signs. There are chariots ready to come and pick them. It will not be immediate, but it will not be very long. There is a baton in the spirit a transference genuine authentic graces and mantles over the next decade hear me I'm saying this by the spirit of prophecy that over the next 10 years there will be a prophetic transition within the body of Christ there are many others have gone still within the decade men like Reinhard Bonke men like T.L. Osborne, Pat Robinson left this year, Maurice Sorulo, they have gone. Our fathers in Nigeria are still here because of their covenant of long life. They will still be here for a while, but it will not be for too long. They know it, we know it. So there is a transition in the spirit. And Elijah told Elisha, if you can see me, if you can see me, if you will not lose focus and see me. But you see, it is not only a handing over of mantles that will be happening. There are other mantles that could not be handed over because there were no faithful vessels to carry it. And when the carriers were old, all those who were in front of them were in the order of Gehazi and Judas. So they could not hand over the mantle. And many of them died with the mantles. But you see, mantles don't go back to heaven. No. That means they are somewhere being preserved by the spirit of grace. Waiting for vessels that will become fit and dexterous. Listen. You will see mantles that we have not seen in the body of Christ maybe for the last hundred years. I pray we have the grace to receive them. You will see people walk in mantles 
that the last person who walked in it was written in the Bible. And you are wondering where did this grace come from? This blend of spiritual formation. Where is this one coming from? I have seen this and it will happen. Oh, you to pray one prayer whilst you are seated father I am available available to be the Esther of my generation available to be the Gideon available to be the Ruth the Naomi available to be the Elijah Shadeka Salaka Go ahead and pray. You're not wasting your time. This is a prophetic and an apostolic ministry. Respond to the staring in the spirit. Respond to the staring in the spirit. in the spirit don't waste it take a few minutes to pray in the spirit we see the cloud we see the cloud we see the cloud we see the cloud a mighty formation in the spirit This is Koinonia. Ale para sobre de belengo ta sabra ka diva latusiata. The spirit man is getting enlarged.
In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Be seated if you can. And so all across the globe, there is a mighty formation. If you are not aware of this, it is because you are not spiritual. The Bible says these days will be like the days of Noah. In the days of Noah, there were two groups of people. There were those who understood what God was doing and they were participating in the building of the ark. And they were the mockers and the naysayers, completely disinterested. But the Bible says it was God himself that came to shut the door. And when he shut the door, the flood came. And everyone who was not in that act of safety died. Everyone. Hallelujah. One of the graces that the apostolic ministry enjoys is access to the dealings of God per season, per dispensation, so that you understand what God is doing and then you can interpret what God is doing and help his people prepare so that when he comes in that regard, they are vessels that are prepared to be mightily used by him. I have a brief charge tonight and the title of my message is This is the Generation. This is the Generation. I'm teaching tonight on the making of mighty men. I want to show you from scripture how men become mighty in the spirit. I want to show you how people become of weight and stature in the spirit. And if you pay attention to what you are learning tonight, you will become such a mighty vessel. This is the generation. Mm. I wonder how we're going to go today. Hey, Shabarus Kadia, Kratakata Balako Sabrenda Gebalash, Krapatos Sabre Kadi Balato Shabris, Embrege Bereko Shabras Kata Balaiski Ambaraso Biata Segedesh, Krata Bareza de Belen Taski Balako Siata, Christ Kanina Mahashana Manda Gebaratos Kotovraskia. Imbra kata di balas anana shabaratos kabiata praige de belede sabarantos ofras ki balega pa imbra teka paratos koto prati balako sabrist skadi balega de prata kata fras kata balanda kabarusiate. Help us, Spirit of the Living God. Okay, please be seated. There are three emphases of the Spirit. Let me start from there. There are three prophetic emphases of the Spirit in these last days. I have taught you, but let me recap. Let me start from there. Number one is the world evangelization. This is the first emphasis of the Spirit in this prophetic season that we are in world evangelization the spirit of god like never before is raising men and he's moving across the length and the breadth of this earth for that one final wave that will bring in the harvest are we together in order of divine priority god's emphasis right now is a greater determination by the spirit to find laborers that can make world evangelization a success. Number two, 
What is the second emphasis of the Spirit in this season? The maturity of the saints. The maturity of the saints. In addition to world evangelization, the second emphasis of the Spirit in this season is that the saints come into an experience of maturity, holistic maturity. Number three, what is the third emphasis of the Spirit over the nations in this season? Territorial transformation. That territories will experience the light, the power, the wisdom of God in a way that the cosmos will have to admit that this is the workings of God. And when it has to do with territorial transformation, it's beyond just healings and supernatural manifestations, witty inventions, creativity, superior ideas by the Spirit that will be revealed through the saints. It's important for you to know this. This is what God is doing in this season. World evangelization. What we are doing in the crusades and the conferences across is in honor to this call and this mandate that he desires that all people be saved and then to come unto the knowledge of the truth. World evangelization, the maturity of the saints, territorial transformation. Now, I want you to listen very carefully. The major challenge, in my opinion, and I submit to you that, particularly in Africa, there's been a growing dissatisfaction as far as nominal Christianity is concerned. People are beginning to be tired, tired of the ritual of religion, tired of church as usual. Are we together? Tired of communications of spiritual things without the power and the authority component. People across the horizon, Christians, and non-Christians alike are beginning to get fed up. Never has it been in history where God is collapsing the walls of denominationalism. People are opening their hearts right now. People who ordinarily would not open their hearts to certain dimensions of the kingdom are now being prepared to at least give these thoughts a chance. Perhaps I can find out about this I have closed my heart to it, but let me be open, perhaps to the ministry of the Holy Spirit, perhaps to discipleship, perhaps to transformation. So there is a lot that is happening. Even unbelievers, men in the order of the Ethiopian Enoch are beginning to be interested in this God thing, this kingdom thing. It is amazing how many non-Christians are connected right now in this nation and across the globe following this. They are, they are not Christians, but they are interested. They are learning. They want to know. They are very open-hearted. People are no longer afraid and closing themselves to say, this is what I know, this is what I believe. The same way many Christians are opening up their hearts too. They are saying, you know what? I'm tired of closing myself in fear, lying to myself. Let me open myself to occultism also. Let me open myself to some Eastern African religion also. So we live in a world and we live in a prophetic season where there is a greater sense of openness. And everybody, I tell you, they are looking for God. They are looking for his power. They are looking for meaning to their lives. Are we together now? People are getting tired of lying, getting tired of faking their living, acting as if things are working, whereas they have not truly experienced God like the Bible said men can experience him. So there's been a growing hunger. There's been a growing dissatisfaction. Even among men and women of God, particularly in Nigeria and Africa, there's been a sudden reawakening. People are getting really serious with God to say, listen, if I do not know this, let me open up my heart to find out what else can there be in God. And this is a very good news for us all. However, I have found out that the major reason why it looks like the Holy Spirit is limited 
in terms of manifesting the reality of the God life, the reality of the supernatural power of God here on earth, the major reason has been the kind and the quality of vessels that are available. I want you to please listen. The major limitation, I can tell you, to the operation of the spirit on earth today, beyond the protocol of prophecy, is that the kind and the vessels that are available are not aligned to the degree that can host that much that God wants to do. Now, in truth, there are vessels. But the Bible tells us very clearly, it says, Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure, having this seal, that the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every man that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Then it says, in a great house, listen carefully, it says there are all kinds of vessels. Some vessels are gold, some vessels are silver, some vessels are wood, some vessels are earth or clay. And he told us immediately that some of these vessels already, they are unto honor. And some vessels are not unto honor. They are unto dishonor. Verse 21 says, if a man will purge himself. So you see that God wants to use the vessels. The master wants to use the vessels unto good works. But the kind and the quality of vessels that we have that are sincerely available. You see that now. They may not be able to birth the purposes of God to God's satisfaction. And it seems to me as though in every generation, God seems to bring a proposition to people within that generation. I want to move. I desire for this generation or any generation for that matter to see my power to see my glory. I desire for this generation to see scripture fulfilled. Sometimes, in a whole generation, he may find just a handful of people and he will have to make do with what is available. And the danger is that the moment there are few people, that move of God will not last because the few people are also human and the burden on them, either the burden of fatigue or the burden of temptations, or the, the, you know, just the humanity of men, or attacks from the kingdom of darkness. And then they are caught out of the way, and God's program is lost. Now God is coming to our generation again, like he has done fairly so to every generation. And the clarion call is not just Maranatha, God, come. He wants to come, but the quality of the vessels... And here's what the Lord revealed to me. There are essentially two defects with the vessels that God desires to use. Two defects. Number one is on one side, we have vessels that are completely disinterested in spirituality spiritual growth and kingdom come so this is the first problem that we have to deal with are we following now so we have vessels they do not even know they are vessels either they are not born again or they are born again but completely disinterested in God's program when we talk about this, there are some of you watching people shout under the anointing, watching people worship, watching people roll, and you are wondering with shock, what is this madness? There is a complete disinterest about anything God, anything kingdom. For others, it's even degenerated to sheer godlessness. They do not want to hear anything that has the name of Jesus on it. This is the first problem that God wants to solve. There are many people today who are not yet saved, but are enlisted as part of the prophetic army in this move of God. That is a very serious thing. Did you know that when Jesus was talking to the 12 disciples and telling them they would still learn other things, the man who he would use was not saved, Paul. 
as at the time Jesus was telling the disciples, I have many other things to tell you. The man that the Spirit of God will use, who would play an active role in writing two thirds of the New Testament, was not even saved. A Pharisee, but hated everything Jesus. To the point that when they were stoning Stephen, the Bible tells us that as they were stoning Stephen, it was under the supervision of Paul as Saul. They kept their garments near him while they were destroying all of these people. And he saw it with joy and gladness. But one day the Bible tells us that on his way to Damascus, can you imagine that level of zeal? He obtained letter from the high priest to go and capture the people who were advocating this Jesus. And a light came, the Bible tells us. He fell down and he heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he says, who are you, Lord? Verse 5. He says, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. That was his conversion. Do you know how many other souls are in Beer Palace right now? Do you know how many souls right now are in homes? Do you know how many souls right now are in some other places? They are not even aware that there is such a heavy mandate upon their lives. Imagine the world without a Reinhard Bonke. Just remove 10 people. Let me give you 10 names. Remove them from the history of the program of God and tell me what we have left. Remove Reinhard Bonke. Remove T.L. Osborne. Remove Maurice Cerullo. Are we together? Remove Billy Graham. Remove, say, Pat Robinson. Just remove these 10 people alone. What do we have left? There is nobody who is walking in the cutting edge of God's program today that was not a product of that generation. In Nigeria today, remove all of these prophetic voices. It was T.L. Osborne who mentored Archbishop Benson Idahosa. That thing you see came from T.L. Osborne. You see, history underreported so many things. And unfortunately, in Africa, we don't preserve history. So there is so much to know to strengthen our work that we do not know. The average young man that God is using now is not connected to history. We hardly know what happened before our arrival. So we cannot know what mistakes to cross, what mistakes to jump. And because our generation is largely an arrogant generation, we are repeating the same mistakes again. The things that are written aforetime, the Bible says, they are for our learning so that we through patience and the comfort of Scripture might find hope. Are we together? So the first problem that the Spirit of God wants to correct is the disinterest, complete disinterest in the things of God. Let me tell you the truth. You would think being a man of God, my life has just been full of meeting zealous people who love the Lord. I have seen people with such almost annoying disinterest for the things of God. And they have a right to reject God. It is their right. God will respect it. Except that in their disinterest, God will have to take their bishopric and give another person. Can I tell you, there are many people you see today, the burden on them is because their assignment they are carrying out was not the original script. Other people who were supposed to have risen have refused to rise. And so God has to make do with the available vessels. And you will see men start as maybe evangelists and keep evolving into other things because they have to midwife many assignments and prophetic programs until the people assigned are trained enough to take it. The danger to that kind of living is that they are the people who now become what you call the Joshua Selmans or the celebrities. The danger is that because you are carrying many people's assignments on your head, your own plus the assignment of a careless person who has refused to know God and rise, any attack that comes on you can destroy the body. The army was never supposed to be few. In any battle, number is an advantage. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And so we have people, and some of these people I'm talking about are here listening to me, following by television, following across the globe. The Spirit of God is calling you. 
We are not just saved to sit down and be disinterested in the program of God. No. No. God wants to move in Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, Malawi, South Africa, Europe, America, everywhere, including Asia. The ends of the earth. But the vessels that he has to make do with, number one, are completely godless or disinterested. There are people who will stand from a distance and watch a crusade happening. And while the man is shouting in the name of Jesus, is it time for you to be saved? They will be laughing and perhaps maybe drinking and telling others, go for And they are completely disinterested. Yet, you see, the thing with God is that he has put eternity in the heart of every man. After all of those misbehavior, you see them still go back and say, there is something in my heart. I can't explain why I can't leave God. They will vow that they will never come to church. Later, you still find them roaming around crusade grounds. They don't even know what is bringing them there. I tell you, it's because they are part of that army. I'm saying this so that when you see such people, you begin to pray and intercede. The scribes and the Pharisees would never open up their heart to receive of what Jesus was saying. Yet you will always find them in his crusade. If you don't like him, go away. But what was keep, still keeping them there? Because there is a cry. Some of you vowed that you will never come for koinonia. You are here now. You vowed that you will never come to church. In fact, you are here now. You insulted pastors and said everybody is a crook. You are still here. You know why? Because there is destiny and prophecy upon you. And let me tell you, provided you are alive, except you use your mouth to say, Lord, I reject you consciously and willingly. Leave me alone. I'm exercising my will. He will respect you. And for some, do you know, maybe based on God's prophetic blueprint, you are supposed to start your kingdom assignment actively, maybe at 20, 30. You are now 40, 45, 50. And God is saying, I'm still waiting. I know time is gone, but we'll find out what we can do with you. Do you believe what you're hearing? Disinterest. Especially for young people, because the glory of young people is their strength. And there are many young people who, I'm not talking of blind fanatism, I'll talk about that. An altar call is made, they are not interested. The Spirit of God is speaking to them. You would be the first person to get born again in your lineage. Why do you think he brought you to church? Just to watch a man? No, too small a reason. It's because he vowed to even your idol worshiper father. One day your idol worshiper grandfather or great grandfather had a voice from this lineage. A prophet will rise. He checked. Who is speaking? It is not my idols. It was God placing a witness. And even if it's after 40 years, you see, Ba, this God is truly a covenant-keeping God. Even if it's after 40 years, he will come back again. I said something to this family. Let me come and find out if there is one vessel who has been born and the Spirit of God starts moving around. And then... He will find out that all the men are not serious and say, let me try the women. It doesn't matter, male or female. I just need someone as a witness that I need to birth my purposes in this family. There are other families, they didn't know God. But when missionaries came to that village, they said, you know what? There is one one bedroom there. I am an idol worshiper. I won't go for your crusade, but stay in that room. And while the man prayed there, there was a witness in heaven. And God said, because this man did this, we will insist that one seed from his loins must serve the Lord. And that's what has brought many of you to church right now. Because you are wondering, how did I get to Abuja? Look at the effort. God had to relocate you. Maybe NYSC brought you here and God refused to allow you go back. Listen, I'm not just preaching. Listen to what I'm saying. God is a covenant-keeping God. He's looking for vessels. And for some of you, because Satan has discerned the prophetic destiny that you have, he started scheduling men to distract you early. Maybe they started distracting you on campus. Maybe they started distracting you everywhere. And right now, the way you are, having dreams of mighty things, 
But as it is right now, there is nothing close to kingdom come in your life. King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. Let me tell you the truth. If it is the God of the Bible bar, those dreams will not stop. You will keep seeing yourself healing. Many people have not seen God when he's looking for a man. God is not ashamed though. God pursues men with the vulnerability that a young man looks to look for a wife. You know how a man is looking for a wife and he will stand in the rain, he doesn't care. That is how vulnerable God is. He will wait for you. If it's 10 years, he will wait for you. Emmanuel, all the world is calling your name. Emmanuel, when you come again. Emmanuel, and the church will see your holy face. Emmanuel, when you come again. Hear me, I'm speaking to someone. Maybe you are in this auditorium. Maybe you are in any of the overflows outside. Maybe following from every nation. I'm interpreting to you the reason why you cry without understanding. The reason why you run away from God and find yourself coming back. It is not just because you are running and coming. There is a beckoning of the spirit. It's a language in the spirit. He's saying, remember you are a vessel. I will not force you, but I want to use you. I will not force you, but I want to use you. You may have destroyed your life, but he can still use you. Desperately finding vessels. Can I tell you the truth? Every generation has been tried. And I said this in Lagos. Every generation will not fail. I can tell you this is the generation. There is a generation that by mercy and by grace will get it right. Mm. So number one, please sit down. We have vessels that are completely disinterested in the things of God. Even though there is prophecy upon their lives. They tremble at the word of God, but something within them has refused to respond to their maker. This is the reason why for every service we make altar calls, not just because we have a mandate. It is the last opportunity for someone in every service. God has been trailing that person for 10 years. Finally, God brought him to Koinonia. You see, let me tell you this. When you see the way we prepare for service in this ministry, this is also part of the motivation. When we pray, when we build up our spirits, when the worship team prepare to set the atmosphere, is because God knows he's finally finding one vessel. Finally. And I can tell you for someone watching me, the Spirit of God is rejoicing at what I'm saying. Heaven is rejoicing because he's saying, finally, now I can fulfill what I promised this lineage. I finally found a vessel. But whether you will say yes to God or not, is now up to you. Do you know it is within your power to look God at the face and say, I reject you. I reject the mantle you want to put upon my life. I'm, I'm not interested in your program. Get out of my life. He will respect you. But the consequence is that you and all those who were designed to be saved and blessed through your life will have to perish. Number two, the second defect with the vessels that God is looking for or the vessels that are available is that there is a lot of zeal, listen carefully, and spirituality or a semblance of it but without true revelation and without compliance with divine patterns don't worry i'll dictate it for you you just listen to me so on one hand we have vessels 
who are not interested in God's program at all. Number two, we have vessels who have the zeal for God, but it is not according to knowledge. Their zeal has led them into various shades of legalism, self-righteousness, and effort in the flesh, and even in futility to host God and host his program. This is something that the Spirit of God wants to balance. I have seen many people, young people, young ladies, when you look at them, you see zeal. They love Jesus sincerely, but either because they were poorly mentored, or either because they were bankrupt of an understanding of the patterns to follow. You see zealous people. If it's prayer, they will pray. If it's fasting, they will fast. If it's Bible study, they will study it, but they do not know the way to the city. Hallelujah. This is even more frustrating because if you do not love God, and that is why you are not being used, that's fine. But where you now seem to love God and after dissipating energy in spiritual activities, you get lost and frustrated. Many in this generation are in that category. They are already following a path that looks like a path to power, but it is a path to doom. Because when it has to do with the business of the kingdom, you are not at liberty to create your formula. There is a pattern that is ancient, older than us all. We are mandated to ask for the ancient path and to follow. Are you not surprised, ladies and gentlemen, and I say this with a great burden for the body of Christ, are you not surprised that with the level of energy that is dissipated in spiritual activities in Nigeria, in Africa, on one hand we thank God for what we have seen, but ladies and gentlemen, the kind of spiritual investment we seem to make versus the authority component doesn't match. No, 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 no. With all due respect, and I'm saying this with no sense of sarcasm whatsoever, I am part of the body of Christ, but the amounts of fastings that go on in this nation and around the world, the amounts of prayer, prayer projects, are we together? The amounts of consecration exercises, huh? the amount of givings, the amount of church attendance, with all due respect, the average believer in this country and across Africa is very, very zealous. But why is it that the power component, it looks like we are not able to do much to strike a chord in the spirit in spite of all that is happening? Have you seen people who fasted and prayed because they were honestly trying to get causes out of their life sincerely? And after the end of the seven days, even dry, they have the same dream that led them to that experience. And they just get up and say, well, God be praised. How about many who have given sincerely and yet they did not receive anything? How about those who love the Lord, serving the Lord? Later they diagnosed that there's some sickness somewhere and they kept praying. They gathered prayer warriors, fasting, and the more they were fasting and praying, that person's body was degenerating in their presence till they died. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. The zeal is important, but if zeal is not guided, it will produce error. If you are on your way to Lagos and you follow the road to Kano and you start speeding, even with tears in your eyes, will you get to Lagos? The problem is not the vehicle. No, the problem is not your driving skill. The problem is maybe something is wrong with your GPS system and it now turned you sincerely. So many people think because they are sincere, they are right. Listen, by the privilege of God's grace, this man you see is talking to you is a student of revivals and awakening. I have humbled myself, taken responsibility myself. Why have we not seen the power that the fathers who have joined the cloud of witnesses commanded? I was sharing with them in Lagos, a great father of faith in this nation. Do you know how he got saved? 
He got saved because one of the old Yoruba preachers was on a crusade ground preaching. True story. And he carried his brother who was born crippled. Carried the brother and was passing the crusade ground. Not attending. And the man shouted in Yoruba. He said in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. That was how his brother dropped and stood on his two feet. Till today, the brother is alive. When he saw that, he said, who is this? No instrument to charge the atmosphere. No clashing any cymbal. This man knew God and shouted by that authority. It was Archbishop Benson in Dahosa who would go from street to street and say, is there any dead man? Is there anyone here who is dead? Because he saw that they shall raise the dead and he took it literally. I've visited many campgrounds in this nation and sometimes I ask them to share with me the histories around it. My God, this man knew God. This man knew God. One time I was in Bonny Island and they showed me the pulpit of one great general of God. The pulpit that was purported to have produced fire. I saw it. It's not that they told me. There is something we are doing wrong. And the first thing is for us to admit that we have done well. But we need to cry on the spirit of grace. Let me tell you the first problem with this second group of people. It's called the danger and the deception of self-sufficiency. The group of many who are zealous, sincere people, but are not able to see God. It is a trap, it's a weakness in all men. That based on the abundance of Joshua Selman's fasting, the abundance of Joshua Selman's prayer, the abundance of Joshua Selman's word study, the abundance of Joshua Selman's attending conferences, God must use me, he doesn't have an option. No. The Bible warns men that our sufficiency is of Christ. This is the difference between our generation and the generation of the fathers. That in spite of the activities they did, their confidence was entirely on the cross. Not on self. Are we together? If I stand here right now, I expect the power of God to move. I expect people to be healed. And I, I put together my spiritual credentials as the basis for why it must happen. And I seem to manipulate God and say, God, you are joking. I have fasted. I have prayed. I have done this. You must move. No, sir. It doesn't work that way. If it works that way, the sons of Sceva were a very consecrated people. Yet the demons did not respect them. I hope you know their father was a priest. Sceva was a priest. How about the disciples who were working with Jesus? And in spite of that proximity, the epileptic patient was not healed by them. And they met him in frustration and said, why couldn't this go out? Listen, we stand a risk as a generation to eventually become frustrated like it is already happening to many. The profitability of spiritual activities is that it translates to power, power that we can see. When God demands that we pray, when God demands that we fast, when God demands that we give into the study of the word, listen to me, none of those activities were supposed to replace his strength and sufficiency in our lives. I had the honor and the privilege of being at a Red Hat Bunker Crusade. I was telling um, one of the families that I preached for in, in, in Lagos, it is not something they told me. By the privilege of God's grace, I had the opportunity to wheel a few people in front. Myself. I saw them on wheelchairs. And when you looked at the size of their legs, you'll be wondering if they will ever stand. And that man came and stood there. Some of us who are masters of revelation, hearing Renard Bonke will frustrate you because you look like there's nothing to say. A simple parable and he's laughing and just shouting, making gestures. And here you are boiling and saying, I want power. As soon as that man was done, watch this. He took a glass of water and then I can't remember what else happened. He was going to pray. 
and he just shouted in the name of Jesus with almost losing his voice blind eyes be healed deaf ears nobody felt anything nobody fell down that I know that I saw nobody shouted Jesus like demon nothing but in my presence I saw some I think I remember at least one of the person I wheeled I saw him get up I saw people throwing their crutches now some of those people did not speak English so they did not even hear what he was saying but the anointing did not care come on now power authentic power they didn't hear what he was saying because there was uh, I mean uh, of course in his crusades that we interpret sometimes but they didn't hear the English that man shouted there frail in himself but full of the sufficiency of Christ you think he didn't pray read his books you think he didn't fast read his books but they leaned entirely on the cross and this was a secret and this is what our generation is missing there is too much marketing of personal credentials is why we are not seeing the power of God so right now the average man of God is under so much pressure do you have Rema? Do you have revelation? How many hours have you prayed? How many hours have you fasted? I'm not saying those things are wrong. Don't get me wrong. But we are delving a generation gradually into self-sufficiency. God does not work like that. No. Go and read the Bible. If God were to use people who were sufficient in themselves, it would be the scribes and Pharisees that would be his disciples not ordinary fishermen are we together now yes and i really feel sad for my generation in all fairness because the pressure that is on the average young man average young preacher a pressure to demonstrate a semblance of spirituality the younger generation coming are even the ones that i really feel sad for because it's like people is it has become competition now how many hours do you pray just one hour you are joking you think God will use you eight hours how many other hours do you study the Bible oh I study my own for well God is helping me there's one devotional by um, by by uh, FCS or SU that's what you are using at this level you are joking you see now don't get me wrong when I preach like this you know I'm not being sarcastic the idea is that we are on the path to disappointment I guarantee you by the integrity of the world so people get disappointed today because they believe it is based on my prayer my fasting Joshua Selman I have Greek and Hebrew lexicon Matthew Henry's commentary I have all of them and based on that you watch and see what God will do and yet one mama will be in her room and say God I didn't go to school I didn't have the privilege to do anything but I want you to use me and God will say I will place a grace on you anybody you pray for that person must rise because this revival we are calling for in truth there is a price to pay but instead of us to calm down and let God teach us how to pay the price we are guessing the price by ourselves and we are paying it and hoping he's seen it it doesn't work that way I have seen the power of God in my life if it's the business of power God has shown me mercy but we count all of these things but dung because there are still higher heights ladies and gentlemen do you know the amount of sick people who are in the body of Christ this is Jesus's own body it is alarming if I ask everyone now we pass a paper and say be honest don't tell church lies be honest write what is really wrong with you there are people who say another paper please because when I finish describing what is wrong with my head alone hello and in the midst of that with that tired head we pray for five hours and nothing happens come on which Holy Spirit are we talking about a demon spirit Go and read what happened to man when the Holy Spirit, genuine power from on high came. Sometimes I wonder if we are ready for the revival we are praying for. If it comes, will we really receive it? 
Hallelujah. There are few people, and I say this sincerely, there are few people I have seen in my life as a man of God that were suffering terminal diseases and believers came and prayed on them and they were healed immediately and got up. If you have seen how many, let me know. I will be glad to learn from you. I'm not talking of someone who is sick that while you were praying, both you and the doctor were walking together. Eventually, glory be to God, he was healed. I'm talking about people who it was an entire display of the power of God that someone who could not walk clearly diagnosed with cancer stage four and you came to that hospital and left with that patient. Our pride is too much. We have done well, but we need to settle down. We are still in kindergarten in the school of the spirit. I tell you sincerely, it's an uncomfortable truth. But ladies and gentlemen, if this is truly the generation, then it must be a generation of humility and recognition that we must go down on our knees and say, Lord, we have tried, but show us the keys we are missing. There is certainly something wrong. Certainly. Certainly. I have watched a few of T.L. Osborne's crusades. Do you know what challenged T.L. Osborne to walk in power? He went to India and preached like many of us are preaching. Oh, Jesus saves. After fasting, after praying, he went there and nothing happened. The people were not interested because there was no proof. He went back and made up his mind that he would contend for power. And when that happened, he returned back there. When he was speaking, they did not pay attention. Based on what we are told, he called on a blind person out. He called on a crippled person and one other person. When they were healed, the people began to shout. My God, I have seen photos of his crusades and I've seen some of the videos. Honestly, if you don't see it, bah, you would think they were lying. This, this issue of legs growing, that cannot be verified in our generation many times. You go and see his crusade. You will see the metal that the person was wearing. Significant inches shorter than the other. And it came out in the presence of everyone. I watched the videos of Charles and Francis Hunter. I used to have their entire healing series. My God, I saw spectacular miracles by these people. I was told of one of our fathers of faith he's gone to be with the Lord now. That man that if he prophesied upon you, if you enter his wherever it is that he's praying and if he speaks concerning you, believe me except you don't believe it, it will come to pass. They said his word did not fall to the ground till he died. There was nothing recorded that he told anybody in prophecy that didn't come to pass. The problem with the vessel, I repeat and I want you to please listen to me. It's not that what we are doing is wrong, but we are beginning to replace Christ with self. It is on the abundance of rehearsal. There is a place for that. But everybody will listen to me because I studied my Bible, because I prayed, because I fasted. Now, what happens when you fast and pray and study? Then it does not happen. Do you know why I'm saying this? This generation we are living now will not tolerate a lie for a long time. Very soon, people will start coming out to say, Mr. Man, you said you healed me. It's a lie. I'm not healed. My medical report is still here. I'm still sick. I pray it doesn't get to that point. Are we together now? Genuine manifestations of the power of God. Brothers and sisters, if the number of times we shout amen in church, that grace literally rested on people. Can I tell you the truth? Nobody will reject shouting amen. I hope you know nobody leaves what works. We are, I'm not saying we are not seeing miracles. Here and there we are seeing trickles of it. But I'm saying it's too small for the pride that we keep communicating. Paul, 
at the apex of his apostolic ministry said, I am the least of all the apostles. He said that I may know him. This is the true character of any vessel that wants to be used by God. You must maintain a perpetual state of insufficiency. I have been crucified with Christ, the Bible says. Nevertheless, I live. But not I. But Christ that lives in me and the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Every time I'm done with any service, every time I'm done with any meeting, I return back and I kneel before my God. I say, Lord, your boy is here to say thank you. Thank you for the much that you have done. But I know for the sake of one more person who was not healed, the sake of one more person whose eyes did not open, the sake of one more person who has not returned with a testimony, I am willing to submit to the school of the Spirit. I will learn. I'm not ashamed to admit where I do not know. That is the, listen, if you're a man of God here, listen to me twice. The days of pride and arrogance and the know-it-all mentality must die permanently. Are we together now? That's why I salute many of you who are vessels unto God. Men of God in your own capacities. Some are following online and some are humbling themselves to listen. You are not listening to a man who is better than you. This is an election of grace. It is the reason why there is no reason to brag. If I sit down and one of my dear people are preaching, I will sit and listen. At that point that they are preaching, this is not father or son or man of God and protege. This is God speaking through a vessel and I will listen. I will learn. I'm not listening to learn one or two things. What can God communicate through them? When the worship team are ministering, I don't look at them and say, my people entertaining them. This is God using yielded vessels to speak to all of us. There is a character disposition that must be restored to the body of Christ. A perpetual recognition that outside of the cross, the best of our effort, even though spiritual, will end up in futility. Did you hear what I said? The best of our efforts it is the reason why you see God raise some of us with no sense of comeliness, yet he continues to glorify God in our lives. It is a message. God told me this and I've announced it to you many times that he said, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. Now, let me tell you the truth and I admit to you and with all due respect to the body of Christ, it is very difficult for a man of God to say what I'm saying to you like this, that you don't know some things? Will people respect you after that one? Will they come back again to hear you? Now, what you need to understand is that members are not stupid people. Whether you tell them or not, they know the truth. Are we together now? But they respect those who admit that they are learning and they can see your sincere press. But when you stand and carry a know-it-all mentality and yet there is no result to show, there are many other heights I need to step into. Every time I read my Bible, do you know sincerely, I don't feel discouraged But my God. Sometimes I just sit down and I say, God, when will we catch up? This, this distance is so far. In Bible days, I would not qualify to be in welfare department. Oh, based on the qualifications they put there. No. I will still come for interview again. Me, Joshua Selman. The one you are clapping, man of God, king of kings for some, lord of lords for others. <laughs> I take away from your life by the spirit, the spirit of pride. Yeah. Every arrival mentality that will not allow you settle down and be sincere with yourself to learn the ways of God, to learn the precepts of God, I curse it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me speak in love, particularly to younger ministers. Never get yourself believing that you are better or greater than the fathers. You are wasting your time. These fathers you see, there are things they have seen. There are many of us, particularly younger ministers who have not even started. 
but our pride will not allow us to be used by God. It is true that there is a mandate upon our lives, but can I tell you, these fathers have lasted decades serving the Lord. We need to be careful. Our works are even yet to be vetted, but these are men who God has granted them grace. They have stood through storms. They have stood through rains, things that some of us will not even be able to pass the test of half of it. The generation that dishonors their fathers is the generation that will never receive any mantle. Let me say it again. The generation that dishonors fathers, even if your father is Noah and you saw him drink and was naked, you still deserve that honor unto death. The generation that becomes self-sufficient and believes that the fathers have nothing to show. Or oh, I have seen it all. Is it not the prayer of our father? Is it not God bless you? Is it not receive? Be careful. What makes the stature of a man is beyond his sermons. What makes the stature of a man is his experience with God and God's covenant with that man. If you judge people by what you perceive to be quality of sermons or quality of charismatism, you will make many mistakes. For instance, a man like our father in the Lord, Baba Deboe, if he comes here right now to come and preach, some of you may be, may be, may be with all due respect, you may be sleeping and nodding your head and saying, well, he's a father, we respect him. But, ah, this sleep, I didn't sleep yesterday. John chapter 3 verse 16. John chapter 3 verse 16. You turn there and the arrogant person has finished quoting it for him. For God so loved the world that he gave his word. Okay, what is there now? What is the Greek and Hebrew? And he says, well, because of this, God wants to save you. He wants to heal you. But let me speak a word of blessing to someone. And you see someone who has not made it, not raised anybody, is broke, is poor, doesn't have any discernment, pocket in his hand, and wondering. I'm not being sarcastic. I'm just being passionate. And at the end of it, those who have even made it are shouting amen sincerely. And that person gets up, and after two weeks, you vanish out of relevance. I repeat to you, dear generation, what makes the stature of a man in the spirit is beyond the sermons. There is a track record men have with God that God honors them all through their lifetime. And we must learn this. There is a lot we must learn from the fathers. Number two, there is a lot we must learn from one another. One another. One another. By this teaching, we must cast away the know-it-all mentality. No. Joshua Selman, is there any other thing you do not know? Who would lie to you like that? Do you know how many things I do not know? Do you know how many other heights we need to cross in the spirit? Never allow what you know to destroy your passion to learn what you do not know. Even if every sick person that comes around me gets healed, even if every oppressed person around me comes and is delivered, I still have something to learn. You see, when I go for meetings to teach, I go to be a blessing to the people, but as I sit there, I'm like a sponge, learning all I can learn. If I can learn spirituality, I can learn excellence and administration. It's not an advantage we had in the North by default, with all due respect. Most of the things I learned in terms of administration and leadership did not come from my background because I did not see that level of dexterity. Maybe moral excellence, maybe sincerity, but I had to outsource from people. For some of them, they received our spiritual understanding. In exchange, we received their understanding of administration and dexterity. That sharing is one of the things that God wants to restore in the body of Christ that we can sit down and learn sincerely from one another. The dimensions, there is no need trying to dig a well that has been dug. 
if God has anointed and graced a person in an area, it is important that that grace is respected and the riches from that grace is received. This is how we will accelerate our becoming a mighty vessel. Hallelujah. No matter how many things you know about prayer, my God, there are people who have been praying before we were born. There are campgrounds in this nation where prayer is 24 hours. Even if you have been making mistake in prayer for 30 years, I think you should have learned something there. There is always something we can learn. Hallelujah. I can tell you graces that I've met and the things that I've learned. I remember one time, years ago, I was just getting to know, with all due respect, I was just getting to know living faith. Do you know how I got to know about God's servant? It was the kind of testimonies I was hearing. That someone will tell you that he was a cleaner and by the next week, he's a manager. What kind of testimony is this? A cleaner then becomes a manager. No interview. And I discerned, I said, what kind of grace is this? We were not born to see that kind of grace. So we opened up our heart. There must be something here. Lord, with humility, this grace is for our taking and they give it freely. What honor component must come in to receive? And some of the things we have gotten today has come from these streams. Every time I've had the honor to meet our Father in the Lord, Daddy Gio, I don't go there as a man of God bragging. I'm in a hurry to go on my knees. Lord, what else is it upon this man's life that can be useful for the sake of the generation we are representing? This is not human worship. I remember one time, I've shared with you the story. I went to preach for a particular ministry and they kept me at the prayer city, MFM prayer city. I slept quietly when it was night. And all the protocol that came had gone back. I came out by myself and strolled around that place and prayed. I said, Lord, whatever you deposited here. Koinonia does not have a campground yet. Do you know the grace that made these people go to the bush and turned it into cities? Come on now. Don't tell me that is intelligence. You try it. Do you notice there was a grace that was released upon that generation? They all caught it. Bushes to cities. You are still struggling to get a duplex, a bungalow, and yet there are graces. Listen, every challenge in the body of Christ has somebody in the body of Christ who carries the anointing to solve it. It is lack of discernment and sheer dishonor to one another vertically and horizontally that is responsible for our stuntedness. There are people who were born from families full of poverty. They cried unto God. They fasted. They covenanted with God. And Jehovah Jireh showed up for them and told them, I want to give you the keys that can bring people into blessings. When they found it, they said, body of Christ, there is something I found. And those who don't even have it insulted. It looks like every generation seems to master the art of persecuting their saviors. So if someone comes up now and says, God said, I should prosper you. The next thing you find out, what, what do I need the prosperity for? Listen, I don't want to tell you the bills, the things that have been paid and will be paid for for this conference. If I tell some of you, you will not sleep this night. You saw that venue we are clapping about? Use your intelligence. That kind of beautiful venue, if it's your own, how much will you give it out? <laughs> the venue you are sitting in right now down to all the overflows the basement outside if it is your property how much do you think it is to run koinonia every service and you are not raising any extra offering you are enjoying now everything is working you are fine the security architecture in this ministry alone let, let me leave that to glory be to God The revival that is coming, 
and the vessels that God desire, please hear me, they must be vessels that are yielded enough. First, loving Jesus with all your heart. But number two, respecting the investment of the spirit that has been scattered across the body of Christ. No matter how you walk with God personally, you will not get every grace you need directly from him. Did you hear what I said? No matter how close you walk with God, the graces that you will need have been carefully distributed across the body. It will take humility and submission to God, to one another, to his system. There are many churches today who have some of the most brilliant minds in the nation as the members. And most of the problems that plague those churches, there are consultants in those churches. In five minutes, they can create a financial model, a leadership model that would take that church out of suffering and mediocrity and numerical decline forever. And yet we men of God come with our pride. Just because intelligent people submit to listen to us, we think that we are talking to a band of dummies. Koinonia for a case study. Ladies and gentlemen, you have no idea the kind of intelligent professionals. Some of them sit only in the overflow. They don't even come inside. These are people of pedigree and they just come to learn and listen quietly. This is the generation that must adopt humility so we do not make a mess of ourselves in pride and then we do not mislead a generation to follow through. The basis of the power of God revealed in our generation, I repeat, is not our self-sufficiency. I began to see the power of God in my life when he helped me die to self, self-sufficiency. I fast, oh, I pray, oh, I study God's word. But let me tell you the truth. I have never credited my growth to any of these things. I am what I am by the grace of God. It is true that this grace was not showered on me in that I labored more than ye all. But every time I pray, I pray standing behind the cross. I fast, I fast standing behind the cross. I study the word, I study the word standing behind the cross. When I'm coming for any service, any other service, the miracle services, I stand behind the cross. The sound of revival conferences is not just a great man of God going to meet a bunch of sinners in America, a bunch of sinners around the world. No, that self-righteousness will always produce embarrassment. God sees my heart that what we are doing as a vision is making our own contribution to this kingdom come agenda. It is the reason why God keeps glorifying himself the way he does. Within 48 hours, a significant portion of the space that was allotted for the conference has been filled up. Nicodemus came and told Jesus, no man can do this except God be with him. You try to use another formula out of Jesus Christ. See, idolatry is not only worshipping idols. Idolatry is also worshipping yourself. You may not build an idol you may not go and get some ugly thing and tie a red band around it. But worshipping yourself in self-sufficiency is idolatry. He said, thou shalt have no gods, including yourself. Are we learning now? I want you to try this. Let Jesus be the central focus. You are a man of God. Don't go and say in this ministry, we cannot fail. Everything... I'm not downplaying, pay your price. But behind that price, hide behind the real price that was paid. Are we together? We do a lot of dispatch riding here in Abuja. There are times that you can order a meal. Someone can pay for the meal for you. And then he tells you, just coordinate the delivery to your house. Maybe what you ordered for maybe say 500,000 and then what you are transporting to your house maybe one or two thousand by the time you become so conscious of your transport fare that you forget the price of what you are even transporting to yourself you are in trouble this is how it is the price that we pay is not the price for creation is the price for delivery 
Did you hear what I said? There is a price to pay. Don't get me wrong. But the price to pay is not the price for miracles. You cannot pay the price for miracles. You cannot pay the price for prosperity. You cannot pay the price for signs and wonders. We only pay the price of faith and obedience that coordinates the delivery of what Jesus himself paid for. This is what I'm trying to correct. In our minds, we believe that we went to the mall in the spirit ourselves and carried healing by our own might and we're walking into a crusade ground through our fasting, through our prayer, through our Bible study. No, sir. The price that the believer prays is not the price to create miracles. It's not the price to create results. It's the price in righteousness as our participation with God to bring that which has been delivered. It was until I studied T.L. Osborne's material that I saw this. I said, this is the key. This is what I've been missing. This is what my generation is missing. In our minds, we think we are paying the price Jesus paid. No man can pay that price. But we pay the price of delivery. When I fast, when I pray, I am not fasting and praying because that is the reason why the sick will be healed. That would be a lie. I cannot fast enough to raise anybody from a wheelchair. I cannot pray enough to shift any climate by myself. What we pray and fast and study to do is to grant us illumination. Watch this now. To be able to safely receive that which has come from him and to deliver it safely to the people. You get what you get that if you understand what I just told you, you have understood my message tonight. It is not a call to hate fasting, no. It is not a call to hate prayer, no. It is not a call to reject dissipating energy for your growth. But have it at the back of your mind. If you ever see one person shout under the anointing in Koinonia, you ever see anybody rise up, throw a crutch, a wheelchair, blind eyes open, don't just think Joshua Selman. Think Joshua Selman later, but think Jesus now. If I ever make any altar call and people come, Chances are excellent you will say this is an anointed man of God. Say that later on. You are not wrong. But what you should say is Jesus. People fasted before Jesus died. He didn't produce power. The scribes, as much as I know a bit of scripture, I don't know the five books of Moses in my head. I don't even have a space for it. Are we together now? The one in my phone is enough. I will not put that kind of luggage in my head. Yet there were people who knew it. I hope you know many of the blessings we quote was in their head and yet it did not speak. Listen, if you buy a new fridge and you don't power it to electricity, it will still not work. If you buy a television and you don't power it to electricity, it will not work. Tonight's message is a clarion call on my generation. We need to understand and define what we call the price for revival. The price for power. The ultimate price has been paid. If we are trying to pay it, it's deception. The price that we pay in righteousness is the price of alignment so that we can safely deliver by capacity and albeit is still by grace. It is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but it is of the Lord that showeth mercy. I remember when I stepped into Manchester for the crusade, when I stepped in and I sat down and I saw the crowds of people, and in a few minutes I was going to walk up and preach, I knew they were sick people. These were not people who were my people that if they are not healed, they would say, let's pity him and come out. I knew I had to pray for the sick. This white people would not lie. And I was standing there before the whole world. You think it was the consciousness of my fasting? No. When God began to do the things that he did, tears almost came down my eyes. And all I saw was the cross. The cross. The cross. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I can be ashamed of my fasting. I can be ashamed of my prayer but not the gospel. So my dear people, continue your fasting and finish it well. 
Continue your prayer and finish it well. But remember, never try to elevate yourself through pride and self-righteousness. That now that I am done with my fasting, now that I gave one million to God, now that I just finished Revelations 22, my life must change. No. We pay our price hiding behind the cross. Let me say this again. This is the generation. These are the mighty men that will become mighty in the spirit. But our concept of being mighty is mighty through God, not mighty in ourselves. If you think there will be sudden, a sudden emergence of macho men who can shout more than we are shouting, you will be disappointed. That is not the description of the army. Let me tell you the kind of army you are going to see. Ordinary men, more ordinary than you see. Did you hear what I'm telling you? You are going to see ordinary men that do not look like it. You will look at the lady and size her and say, you, it is you God is going to use to change this place in Kogi State. And she'll say, he told me. And you say, God, you must be joking. This weak lady, surely Eliab is the Lord's anointed. And he says, no, no. Eliab is well built, but this is not how I see things. Go to the bush. There is a young boy there. Now that young boy practiced how to throw his sling, but it was not the sling. It was the power of God. When he said, I come to you in the name of the Lord God of the armies of Israel, he was still holding a sling. That sling is your fasting. That sling is your prayer. That sling is your Bible study. That sling is your consecration. Are, are we together now? That sling is your giving. But as you use your fasting, as you use your prayer, as you use your Bible study, the moment you throw it, know that in itself, it cannot bring Goliath down. But there is a force that rides upon your fasting. There is a force that rides upon your prayer. There is a force that rides upon your giving. That force is not an it, it's a him. It's called Jesus. I suddenly found a missing link I prayed and I said Lord open my eyes where is this here so the balance here is there are people who when they find out that the ultimate price has been paid Jesus let me use this to balance up and then we'll wrap up there is an error that can come out of what I've just said if not balanced it is the error of complacency that will make us say, okay, Jesus has paid the price. Why fast? Why pray? Why give? Remember the story of David and Goliath. Remember the story of my dispatch rider. These are stories to help you connect between your price and his price. His price bought the product. Your price helps to guarantee its delivery to you. David went to the battle by his own effort. He went there. The sling and the training of it was his personal practice. But when it had to do with bringing Goliath down, he threw that sling, a combination of fasting, a combination of prayer, a combination of reading all the books. When he threw it, there was effort on his part. But he would have missed Goliath anyway. But when that divine power push that sling it hit Goliath once this is how to make fasting profitable when fasting hides behind the cross it becomes powerful when giving hides behind the cross it becomes powerful are we together now when praying hides behind the cross it becomes powerful when Bible study hides behind the cross, it becomes powerful. When he, Greek and Hebrew and Latin and Aramaic words hide behind the cross, they become powerful. The moment you replace the cross, all you carry is a sling. All you carry is a dispatch rider with no product. So we come to people and say, you know what? You will be healed now. If you are not healed, I'm not Joshua Selman. And at the end of it, we don't change our names because the people were not healed. Because we came with a sling. And even though we say in Jesus' name, 
the truth is that it's not with the consciousness to decrease so that he will increase ladies and gentlemen all those auditoriums you saw for us for uk for canada will be packed full with hungry people and this frail man you see standing before you as frail as you still see me will be standing there before those people the only difference is that I will be hiding behind the cross. And it is because of Jesus <laughs> that is what will give value to our fasting. All I'm carrying there is the sling. I will fast, oh. I will pray, I will study. There will be a sermon I will preach that day. There will be people worshiping. Everything you heard the worship team sing was the sling. What you are hearing me say now is still the sling. When you see people come here to give their lives to Christ, that penetrating power that is getting into your spirit, that one is not my sermon again. It is a cross. Amplifying what I'm doing. That is why sometimes you will hear us communicate in the most basic way. As childish as Reinhard Bonke, do you know the kind of big cross that was behind Reinhard Bonke? Now you know why the sick were healed. Man of God, I give you a formula. Go and try it and come back rejoicing. Listen, they returned to Jesus rejoicing and said, even the demons were subject to us, not because of anything we did in your name. Africa is a praying continent. Commendable. We must retain that template. Africa is a fasting continent commendable we must retain that template africa is a giving continent commendable we must retain that template africa is a word study church going conference holding continent we must maintain that template but what we need to reintroduce to africa is that all things must step back and allow the cross which is the ultimate price and allow Jesus who truly paid the ultimate price he must take the stage in our churches that while we are fasting we must let people know that the assignment of my fasting is not to create healing not to create salvation is to help my alignment my fasting does not help God my prayer does not help God my prayer does not make Jesus strong. My word study does not make Jesus strong. Every spiritual activity affects me, not God. From his end, all things are finished. My assignment is to keep aligning. Take it, take it lower for me. It's time to sing and wrap up. He won't stop. He won't stop. Till I look just like him. He won't stop, no, he won't stop Till my life looks like him God is raising mighty men in this place God is raising people of power in this place He won't stop, he won't stop Till I look just like him He won't stop, he won't stop Till my life looks like it. Hear me. If I tell you today, Koinonia Global, if I tell you today that I am where I am, having the kind of grace that God has given me, enjoying the privileged influence that God has given me, entirely as a product of the correctness of my Bible study, my prayer life, my fasting, I am a liar. Did you hear what I said? Let me repeat it again. If I tell you God is doing what he's doing through me, simply because I fasted more than everybody, I prayed more than everybody, I confessed God's word more than everybody, it's a lie. I know people we are raising who have not come close to their hours and days of fasting. I told you about the gentleman who fasted for 400 days. I wrapped up the, the, the meeting with him. And that gentleman has not raised one person from a wheelchair. That the excellency of power may be of God. It is the reason why I do not count anything in my life 
worthy of bragging about because the price that I'm mandated to pray, I repeat, is the price for delivery, not price for creation. Price for delivery, not price for creation. So if I say in the name of Jesus, Lord, heal the people, bless the people, I am not making the miracles happen necessarily. The miracles are there in the spirit. I am aligning myself and fulfilling the ordinances that have been connected to their safe delivery. If you know this, we are ready for revival. Because now we can pray like never before. We can fast like never before. But we don't get up and begin to bully members and bully people. How many hours have you prayed? Two hours. You are not serious. How many Bibles, uh, uh, scriptures have you read? I've only read from the whole of Genesis. By February, you are only in Genesis. You are not serious. It is self-righteousness. It is legalism. It will only lead us to peril. We may be doing it sincerely, but this is a clarion call. It is true that this is the generation that has been prophesied, but it is not going to happen the way we think. There is no man who has the accurate, perfect blueprint of what God is about to do. We only have types and shadows. All of us must file behind the cross with humility and allow the Lord of the harvest, who is the Holy Spirit himself, to lead this army. In this army, there are no class monitors. There is only one spirit and everybody is a student. Nobody is supervising another person. No. Because we are all learning from the Spirit of God as well as learning from one another. Please hear me. When the Bible says this is the generation, it is a generation that must understand God more accurately. The price for revival, I will repeat again, no amount of fasting and prayer and word study and consecration will ever be enough in our strength to host God and bring revival. It is a lie. What we need to understand is that the price for every sinner's salvation has been paid. The price for every sick person's healing has been paid. Hear me, the price for the prosperity that will help your establishment has been paid. Fully paid. Not part payment, not half payment. What then is your own commitment? Why do you then come to church? Why do you then pray? Why do you then fast? Why do you then come for an altar call? Remember, it is the price for alignment for the purpose of delivery. Alignment for the purpose of delivery. If you will not praise me, I will raise up stones. Stones don't fast. Stones don't sing praise and worship. Stones don't do this, but they can still praise him if he so wishes. So if you are praising him, it's not just because of your voice. My dear worship team people, keep building your voices, but know this, it is not the sound of your voice that makes someone to rise from a wheelchair. No. The sound of your voice is to train yourself enough to bring in the excellence that sponsors safe delivery. Rise up on your feet. There's gonna be a great awakening. There's gonna be a great revival in our land. There's gonna be a great awakening. And everyone who calls on Jesus, they My brother, hear me. It is not only the Joshua Selman's God is looking for. He's looking for you. There is something I cannot do. It is not part of my assignment. It's not in the blueprint of my description. But it is needed for this awakening. Listen to me. Never celebrate men at the detriment of your own call. Love people and admire people. But not to the point of worship. There is also a place for you in prophecy. And I have taught you, go and listen to my message, redefining the coming revival. One more time, redefining the coming revival. Go and listen to it. I teach there that the revival that is coming is not only the revival of Elijah's. Mary's have a role to play. 
Joseph's as economic giants have roles to play. Daniel's as leaders have roles to play. The revival would not just be about pulpit and crusades. It will be the whole capture of God's intelligence invading the cosmos. If God is sending you to do business, don't turn and start preaching because you were told only preachers are serious with God. Businessmen too can be serious with God. If preachers are broke and they have nobody to finance them, it will look like God did not call them. Stay in your area of call and have the same confidence of an apostle, the same confidence of an evangelist. When we gather like this in Koinonia, it is the convergence of people from various stations coming together to learn. When we are done, we diverge back to our places. Samson goes back to where he should go. Elijah goes back to where he will go. Mary goes back to where she should go. Esther goes back to the palace. This is the revival we are praying for. The revival will not just be crusades alone. Other revivals generally seem to be crusades alone. But this revival that is coming, I can tell you, is an awakening that will affect every strata of human activities. If preachers are the only ones who spearhead the revival, it will fail. The preachers need counselors to advise them in wisdom so they don't destroy their ministries because of lack of intelligence. The counselors need men of God to pray for them so that they are, they are rid of all kinds of attacks. The men of God themselves need doctors to help them and encourage them to stay healthy by teaching them what to eat to have the energy to continue on the crusade ground. Are we together? The men of God need faithful members and faithful people to lift up their hands. The crusade grounds need technical people, not just preachers. The man of God is ready to preach, but there are those who need to set the sound. The man of God can preach, but the crusade will need worshippers. The crusade will need financiers. We are airing right now to the world. It is not just tongues that made that happen. There is the professional creativity and intelligence of people that is making this word to go to the globe. One prayer, Lord, in whatever capacity you desire to use me, I am ready and I am available. Go ahead and pray. Please go ahead and pray. Take it seriously. No moving around. Please pray. Everyone pray. Zaria, make sure you are praying. Go ahead and pray. Sali barato savragede belegede bakasiata. In whatever capacity someone is praying, is Esther praying? Is Elijah praying? Is Abraham praying? Is Gideon praying? Naomi, are you praying? Ruth, are you praying? Mary, are you praying? Preparing to birth Jesus. Elizabeth, are you praying? John the Baptist, are you praying? Apostle Paul, are you praying? Everybody has a role to play. The mother at home has a role to play. The banker has a role to play. The kingdom billionaire has a role to play. The politician has a role to play. The chef, the caterer has a role to play. The technical person has a role to play. The leadership consultant has a role to play. The judiciary have a role to play. The sports people have a role to play. Pray everyone. Father, find a worthy vessel in me. I am a vessel that is available. I will not be careless. I will not be godless. Someone is praying. Regardless my background, Find a precious vessel in me. I submit myself to learn. I submit myself to honor fathers. I submit myself to learn from mentors, from colleagues, from contemporaries. Whatever you want to do, Lord, you can do through Whatever you want to say, Lord, you can say through me. 
whatever you want to lift lord you can lift through me go ahead and pray me listen to me ladies and gentlemen I want you to go and listen to this message and give everybody you can find this is a prophetic message to the body of Christ that this is truly the generation what will make us different from other generations is not more fasting wrong not more prayer wrong not more Bible study wrong it is the privilege of an election of grace with the humility of heart. This is a generation that God will use because we are the generation that has chosen willingly to hide behind the cross and to recognize that all that will be wrought in righteousness through us will happen because the price has been paid. Our price is not to pay what Jesus has paid. Our price is to use these spiritual activities in righteousness with every depth of humility to align ourselves that by the mercy of God, we can through the stamina of prayer, fasting, obedience, consecration, we can receive delivery from the realm of the spirit where it resides to the realm on earth where it is needed. This is your assignment. Any other thing after that, the devil has given you a burden that has no rewards. I have studied my scripture. I have learned from people who produce results. And by the privilege of God's grace, the bit that we have produced here, I can tell you with audacity and with the confidence of scripture, legalism, pride, self-righteousness, believing that it is on account of what we have done, it will not earn us anything. We will only waste our time and be shouting week after week until we become old and watch in shock that God's program is never birthed. Hear me. We are not better than the generation of the fathers before us. It is simply an election of grace. So I speak to every warrior. I speak to everyone who is part of this army. The reason for our excelling has never, will never, be because we pray the greater price there is a price to pay but the price is the price of delivery not the price of creation when David held the sling that sling is like his fasting that sling is like his Bible study that sling is like his consecration that sling is like his prayer but the sling in itself cannot bring down Goliath it is the revelation of the name and the one who represents us and who we represent that made that happen let it be known to you O Israel that the same one you have crucified has today been exalted as Lord and Christ and while they heard it they were caught to the heart behold their threatenings Acts chapter 4 and grant that signs and wonders be wrought they were praying but they said signs and wonders be wrought not because of our prayer through the holy name of your son and the building shook and they were filled with the Holy Ghost one final prayer father grant me a revelation of Jesus above and beyond my spiritual activities grant me a revelation of the cross the blood that flowed from Calvary's tree that this is the basis for every healing this is the basis for my prosperity. It is good to give, but no amount of giving is enough to program favor in your life. 
no amount of fasting, no amount of piety and religiosity and self-righteousness is enough to make you qualified enough to host a revival coming. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. I want you to listen to this message before Sunday. Please, take it as a prophetic instruction. I'm saying this to Koinonia Global. Go to Koinonia Global. Listen to this message at least two times. Please, just take this as a prophetic instruction. Go and listen to it again. Some this night, some by tomorrow. This time around, listen to it prayerfully. Find yourself in this sermon and pray. For some of you, while you are praying, you can even add fasting. Now you know your fasting will work. Because the fasting does not change God. It aligns you so that you will hear something then that you did not hear now. Paul said that all he desired to know was Christ crucified. No wonder he was powerful. You think it was because of Paul's fasting and prayer? You think it was because of Peter's fasting and prayer? How many times did Jesus himself fast and pray in the Bible? 40 days, once. How many 40 days have you done? Now, I'm not downplaying it. How many times did you see him reading the Bible? He went to the temple as his custom was. How many other times did he go when he started? I'm not downplaying these things. But I'm saying the master went to make this happen. I will never believe my fasting is the reason why God is doing what he's doing. Nor my prayer. I will keep paying the price. But for me and for this global family, if anybody asks you, what is the true secret behind the mighty hand of God in this ministry and in the life of this man? If you say Bible study, you didn't answer accurately. If you say fasting, you didn't answer accurately. If you say word study, consecration, you didn't answer accurately. The real answer is the consciousness of Christ crucified and the reality of this resurrected power at work in mortal vessels. Then, when you say that, you can say those riches in glory were enhanced and made manifest through fasting, you are right. Through Bible study, you are right. Through prayer, you are right. Through consecration, you are right. This is the real secret of revival. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray over your precious people. I have brought your truth as you have shared to me. <laughs> the real secret that made generals. The secrets we've been trying to find for a long time. You have granted us access to it by mercy that the secret is the cross. The secret is Jesus. The consciousness of the ultimate price that has been paid alongside the price of alignment we need to pay to bring full delivery. This is the real secret of the move of God. Help us, oh God, to be major participants in this wave of awakening and revival sweeping across this nation, Africa, and even the globe. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please keep your hands down. The starting point for the move of God is acknowledging the Lordship of Jesus over your life. You've heard me teach. Please keep standing. I know we've been standing. My apologies. But I want to make a call now. No coercion. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, hearing this message tonight, I cannot truly say I am part of this army because only those who are in Christ by new birth, acknowledging Jesus Christ can be part of that army. It is true that you are part of this generation, but that only happens in experience if you willingly make Jesus Lord of your life. I want to make an altar call right now, calling two people in one. Number one, those who are saying, I truly need Jesus in a hurry and right now. And then those who are saying, Apostle, I want to rededicate my life to Christ. I'm counting one to five. Leave your seat, take your bags, your Bible, everything you came with and run to the front here. 
By the count of five, you should be standing here. You are doing this for the sake of Jesus and for the sake of your destiny. I begin my counting now. One, Koinonia, let's celebrate them. Two, are you happy for a new recruit in this army? Mighty men and women coming to declare the Lordship of Jesus over their lives. Three, all the overflows, Zaria, UK, Canada, US, anywhere across the globe. Make sure you indicate your desire to surrender everything to Jesus. Let him make beauty and glory out of your life. Hallelujah. Now, do you think I can ever fast enough, ever pray enough, ever preach enough to make people leave their seats and come and stand here? You are intelligent. No. Behind the frailty of my words, behind the limitations of my fasting, behind the sincerity of my prayers is the cross. This is what has brought these people here. This is what Peter preached. Listen to me. I have read Peter's sermon. I will not preach that kind of sermon on a crusade ground. But Peter preached it and 3,000 people came because he did not speak in the flesh. Man of God, keep on with your diligence, but have it that at the back of your mind, the real secret is Jesus revealed and Jesus glorified. Those in front here, I salute you in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. And I welcome every one of you to this place. You are making the wisest decision that any man can make. It doesn't matter what is right or wrong in your life. When you come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Please lift your right hand with me as a sign of surrender to this Jesus. And say after me as loud and as clear as you can. Say, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my savior, as my Lord, and as my king. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight and forever, I'm a child of God, washed by the blood of the Lamb. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep your lovely hands. Father, we thank you. Please keep lifting them as I pray for you. Your word declares that as many who will come to you, you will in no wise cast away. These precious ones have come declaring your lordship over their lives. And in the name of Jesus, I pray that based on the authority of God's word, I declare your sins forgiven. I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. I declare that you will go from glory to glory and grace to grace. That everything that is not of God it must give way in the name of Jesus Christ. You are empowered by the Spirit, the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead. That same Spirit empowers you to live a victorious life in the name of Jesus. Go from glory to glory, for in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen. Please let me request that you move to my right. There are counselors lifting the placard. They will have a word with you for a few minutes and then you'll be back to your seat. Let's honor them as they go. Koinonia, give them a big, big God bless you. Is that the best you can do? In Jesus' name we pray. Please remember the instruction that I gave you. Go back and listen to this teaching again and hand it over in love 
to any and everyone you know that sincerely has a passion for the things of God, a passion to see the move of God come. There is a secret in this teaching that by mercy can deliver a generation. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we honor you and we thank you. We give you praise for that which you have done tonight. We worship you. We pray that as we depart, we depart in your love. We depart in your grace. We depart conscious of the price that you have paid. And we depart energized again to yet pay the price that we have to pay with this understanding to become yielded vessels, vessels that will do much for you with our lives. We give you all the praise. I bless your week beginning. Amen. Say amen. amen. I bless your week beginning. Amen. Enjoy favor. Amen. Enjoy multiplication. Amen. Enjoy honor. Amen. Nothing is missing in your life. Amen. Nothing is broken in your life. Amen. Trouble is far from you. Amen. You will enjoy the help from God. Amen. You will enjoy the ministry of destiny help us. In the name of Jesus, every tongue that rises against you, it falls in judgment. Amen. You will enjoy joy unspeakable, even full of glory. May the Lord anoint you afresh and make you a mighty battle axe. May the Lord anoint you afresh and cause you to be a sign and a wonder. Everything works in your favor. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name we pray. Together, let's share the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercies follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. See you on Sunday.